Good morning, Pleasant Grove. Uh, thank you for tuning in wherever you may be. I'm sure a lot of you are in your living room or uh, watching on your phone. Or I know it's inconvenient. I know most of us would rather be here in person, enjoying each other's fellowship and the community that we have here. But uh, this is who we are for now, and this is how we're going to be doing church from now. And I know that uh, you know that church is not a building. The church is a people. It is a group of believers. And though we may not be gathered in the same building, we're still gathered under the name of God and through his Holy Spirit. And so I want to encourage you to do a few things. Number one, be engaged during this service. Pretend like you're here. Uh, engage as you normally would. Participate. Open your Bibles. Read your Bibles. Uh, be a part of the service as best as you can. There are a few benefits that I want to share with you about maybe gathering from our homes or wherever you may be. Number one, you get to control your thermostat. You don't have to worry about it being too hot or too cold in the sanctuary or making sure uh, so-and-so is happy or pleased with how it feels. Grab a blanket if you want one. Grab a pillow. However, you need to, but uh, control it. Be in charge of your own thermostat. Second, you don't have to worry about somebody sitting in your pew. You may need to kick somebody out of your favorite recliner or your favorite seat in the house. Also, you get to pass this on to others. Uh, we can share this link with friends, with family members, with those that maybe are not in church. A good way to share the message and let people know who we are and what we are doing. And lastly, you don't have to get dressed up. In fact, my shirt's not tucked in and I may be wearing shorts as I'm preaching this message. But I do want to pray for us as we begin and ask God to lead us in his spirit to guide us and teach us this morning. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we thank you for technology. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together even though we're not in each other's presence, but we are through your presence. And so we thank you for your spirit who is with each and every one of us. Father, as we are navigating through these difficult times, we ask that you give us the guidance, the clarity, uh, the wisdom that we need to make wise decisions, to stay safe, but yet to, in, to continue connecting and encouraging each other. We love you and we thank you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. I do want to ask you to turn to the book of Proverbs. We're going to be reading a familiar passage, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Uh, it's a familiar passage and one that if we're not careful, we can just read over quickly and not pay attention to what the author is really trying to tell us. But I think this uh, passage speaks volumes to who we are today, what we're going through today, and how we can get through this together. I'm going to start reading in verse 1, and I'm going to read through verse 6. My son, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commands for they will bring you many days of full life and well-being. Never let loyalty and faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and high regard with God and people. Verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Trust is a word that you've probably used a lot over the last couple of weeks. It's a word that you've probably heard used a lot over the last couple of weeks. And uh, I want us to focus in on that this morning, specifically trying to figure out um, how we can navigate this difficult time that we're going through. And trust is something that uh, we need to put only in the hands of God and in his word. First thing we see in verse 5, the first part, is it tells us about this trust, that it's a total trust. Look at verse 5, the first part. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's a total trust. God demands undivided attention, undivided commitment. And for us, that's not always easy to do. It's not God's word plus something that we trust in. It's not the promises of God plus what the news is saying, plus what we read on social media, plus what our friend or family member is saying. But it's complete, total trust in who God is and in God's word. 
Our hearts and our minds are not always reliable. It is uh, very dangerous for us to place trust in anything other than God. It is complete and total trust in God that will get us through this difficult time. Total trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That means that we've got to stop giving our heart to things that doesn't deserve our heart, that is not worthy of our worship, of our attention, of our trust. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Second, we see that this type of trust that we are to have is an exclusive trust. The second part of verse 5 reads, And do not rely on your own understanding. We foolishly rely on our heart, on our mind, on our own wisdom, and even our own emotions at times. And we can be so easily distracted and even led astray because we are sinful people. We are unable to fully comprehend everything that's going on around us. But God can because God is in complete control. And so when we trust him totally, what that means is that we're trusting him only. That we are excluding anything and everything else, especially our own wisdom, our own thought process, and we're trusting in him. When we choose our own understanding, when we choose to do things our way, what we're doing, in essence, is telling God that we don't need him, that we know better than him. And we're being selfish because God truly is the only one who knows. He's the only one that's in complete control. And so sometimes when we trust in our own understanding, what we're actually doing arrogantly is saying, God, I've got this. I understand. And I, therefore, I'm going to do things the way I want them. How many of you have ever been led astray by a choice you made? Maybe your mind took you somewhere that you didn't want to go. Maybe your heart was misled through some emotion that you were feeling. So how do we not trust in our own understanding? Well, we familiarize ourselves with God's word. We see his promises. We read about his wisdom. We read about his knowledge. And we see first and foremost that it's his love that draws us to him. God loved us so much that he made a way for us to know him, to trust in him, and to not rely on our own understanding. And so it begins with total trust with all of our heart, and then that moves into an exclusive trust, which means that we're not relying on our understanding or anyone else's understanding, but we're placing our trust in God's word. And so not only is it exclusive, but this trust needs to be inclusive, meaning Look at verse 6. In all your ways, know him. So trusting in God needs to include every part of our life. Trusting in God needs to include all of who we are and all of what we do. God is big enough to handle anything that we bring to him. There is nothing too small, nothing too large that God will not give his attention to it. And for us, what this looks like is that our finances, our family, our health, our relationships, our careers, everything that we're dealing with during this time, we need to be able to trust him with it and say, God, you know better. You know more than I do. And so I'm including all of me. I'm including everything that I have and I'm placing it at your feet and trusting you completely. Trusting you because you have proven yourself to be faithful. Trusting you because you've not let me down. Trusting you because you've guided me through some difficult times in the past, and I know that you will continue to guide me through these difficult times today. But trusting him when things are going well. Trusting him when we get through this. Trusting him as individuals and as a church, because we know who he is and we know what he's done. I love how the Christian Standard Bible reads this part. It says, in all your ways, know him. Some of your translations and a lot of translations read acknowledge. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. But what this is, it's more than acknowledging who he is. It's more than acknowledging what he can do, but it's trusting in who he is. It's knowing him. It's being faithful to him. It's being obedient to him because... We know him because we understand who the Bible says he is, and we trust that. God is with us, 
even when it's difficult to understand. God is with us, even when we may be overwhelmed by what we're seeing on the news. God is with us as a church, even when we can't gather together as a church. And because of that, we can trust him. Because of that, we understand that he is big enough, he is strong enough, and he is wise enough to lead us in the direction that we need to go. And when we trust him totally, when we trust him exclusively, and when we include everything under that umbrella of trust, what we find is a peace. A peace that passes all understanding. A peace that calms any anxiety, any worries that we may have. It's a peace that can only come through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Do we trust him? Are you trusting him personally with your family? Are you trusting him personally with your health? Are you trusting him understanding that he knows everything and he is involved in everything? Trust is difficult because we can't always see what that's going to look like. Trust is difficult because we do have doubts. We do have fears. We do have worries. Trust is difficult because it's an action. We can't just say we have trust, but we've got to prove it through how we live our lives. When I was a youth pastor going to youth camps, they would have several group building activities. One of those was what is called a trust fall. Some of you may be familiar with a trust fall. Some of you may have even participated in a trust fall. But what a trust fall is, you take your small group, however many, and they line up, uh, you split them in two, and they're lined up in front of each other and they're holding their arms out and then you've got somebody that climbs up on this deck and what they do is they fall with their back falling first trusting that those beneath them are going to catch them well when i was a youth pastor involving my group in this i never wanted to participate other than catching people um, i was not much smaller than i am now then and I didn't really trust them to catch me. Not because they didn't like me or not because they wanted to drop me, but I wasn't sure that they were going to do it correctly. You see, when you cross arms, you've got an arm in between each arm. And when you do that, their force is their way to spread across all these different arms and you catch them. And so they convinced me to do it. I climbed up on the deck. I stood uh, with my back facing them, my arms crossed. And you're supposed to say, um, fall. And they'll say, uh, falling. You say fall. You fall backwards, keeping your arms in the whole time. And you're supposed to land in their arms. They catch you, drop you down. You hug. Everybody has a great moment. Well, I didn't get caught. In fact, the only part of me that got caught were my feet. Everything else hit the ground. And I know that's not a good illustration of what trust looks like because I failed, they failed, they laughed, I was hurt. But what we see is with God's word in Isaiah 41, we understand that we can trust God, that his arms are big enough to take anything that we place in them. And it's because of that we can place our total trust, our exclusive trust, and our inclusive trust in him. So I want to close out by reading Psalm 41, verse 10. It says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Some of you may be going through some difficulties with this coronavirus scare. Some of you may have concerns that are not being answered. But what this verse reminds us and what the passage in Proverbs reminds us is that we have somebody who not only knows and cares, but is holding us. And so do we trust him? Do we trust him enough to place all of who we are in his arms, knowing that he loves us, that he cares for us, and that he is holding us? It's my hope and it's my prayer that we are doing that. And that begins with salvation. That begins with us seeing how much God loves us through Jesus and placing our complete faith and trust in not only the person of Jesus, but in the work of Jesus. 
You see, what Jesus did on the cross is he defeated fear. He defeated death. He defeated these things that we struggle with, that we worry about. And in him, we find peace. In him, we find comfort. In him, we find healing. And so it comes back to, do you know him? Do you know him enough that you're placing your faith and trust in him? As you read God's word, what you find is that the more you get to know him, the more likely you are to trust him. And so maybe the problem isn't whether or not we really trust him, but how well do we know him? During this quarantine, you've probably, like myself, have found yourself with more time. You're sitting around more. You're doing less. What an incredible opportunity to spend more time in God's word. Spend more time getting to know him like the mission of our church is to know Jesus and to make him known. What an incredible opportunity we have to draw close to him, to rest in him, and to find our peace and our hope in him. Let's join together in trusting that God is in this. Let's join together in placing our faith and trust in Jesus, knowing that he loves us, knowing that he cares for us, and knowing that he is with us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the promises that we find in Scripture. We thank you, Father, for the peace that we can have through your Holy Spirit. So, Father, help us to trust you. Regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of what we may battle, be battling in our hearts and in our minds, help us to trust you. Help us to trust you with all our heart, to not lean on our own understanding, but in all of our ways that we seek to know you. And we thank you that that we have the promise of not having to fear because you are with us. And so help us to feel your presence. Help us to draw close to you. Help us to understand just how much you love us. We thank you, Father, for this church, even though we're not able to gather here together physically, that we can gather together spiritually. Father, I thank you for all the prayers, for all the encouragement. And we know, God, that you're working through this. We know that we as a church can come through this stronger than we were because of who you are and how we're placing our trust in you. So we thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing. And Father, we place everything in your hands. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.